first Ulster title since 1981 have been forced to make one late change. Barry Breen, number 17, coming in at left full back for Jim McCartan, who has an ankle injury. But Breen from the Downpatrick Club has lots of experience and he impressed earlier this season with some good displays in the National League. Elsewhere, down have Paddy Kennedy and Paddy O'Rourke lending their vast experience to the centre of the defence. Ross Carr is an exciting newcomer at number seven. Liam Austin captains the team from midfield and their strength and exceptional ability in the centre of the forward line too. Greg Blaney, a marvellous centre half forward. And Ambrose Rogers, a noted score maker rather than a score getter at number 14. Sadly, on this big occasion for Ulster football, there's no Frank McGuigan to lead Tyrone. But their captain today, Eugene McKenna, is another of the game's outstanding players. And everybody's delighted that he's fit to play despite constant problems with arthritis. Tyrone's preparations for this Ulster final have been upset by the groin injury carried by that fine right fullback, Sean Donnelly. But good news for Tyrone is that the Trillig clubman does play because he's passed a late fitness test. Though young Pat McKeown from Gal Valley, a club that has never had a man on a Tyrone championship team, is standing by should he be needed during the game. Tyrone have an exceptionally good half-back line too of Kevin McCabe, Noel McGinn and Joey Mallon. Plunkett Donaghy, the number eight, is a brilliant fielder and Damien O'Hagan, the full forward, is another exciting talent to look forward to. Convent Hill in the background here at St. Tiernix Park in Clonus is alive to the sounds and colour and excitement of the Ulster final. Eugene McKenna, the Tyrone captain, to get his team onto the attack for the first time. It was Sean McNally, a very fast half forward. He was held, it's a free to Tyrone, and Mickey Mallon is the man who'll come out to take it. This is Mickey Mallon, one of the uh, two Mallons from the Eden Dark Club. An important kick for him after only 50 seconds of this Ulster final, playing with the aid of a slight breeze. And Mickey Mallon, he's found the range, he's found it beautifully. He looked very confident as he stepped up to that one. He's got the point. And Tyrone take the lead, and that's a setback to Down, who always like to start well in their matches. And the big crowd here, packed uh, up. On the hill there, what a wonderful natural sporting amphitheatre St. Tiernux Park is. Hidden Skelton's kick, meanwhile, pulled on there by the left uh, half-back, uh, Joey Mallon. Down to Damien O'Hagan, one of the very best full forwards in the game. He was looking for Plunkett Donaghy, it, it fell instead to the right half forward, Mickey McGraw, and he's got the point. It was not quite that good, what Damien O'Hagan intended, because Plunkett Donaghy was calling for it. That's Plunkett Donaghy, but the man who got the score was Mickey McGraw. So Tyrone have started the better, but Pat Donnan's kick. Uh, kicking it into a, a, a wind, it isn't all that strong, it may not be all that influential, but uh, I'm sure the players are aware of it all the same. John Lynch, who used to play at wing back, uh, a very experienced player, he's playing at corner back today. Knocked down towards uh, Mickey Linden. The Tyrone man uh, is fouled by Mickey Linden, it's a free out to, to Tyrone, and just at the moment, very little is going right for the down man. Put through nicely there by Sean McNally to Eugene McKenna. He'll try for a point if he has the space. He has. That, that looks a good one from Eugene McKenna. The team captain leads by example and shows the way. But it was flicked through beautifully by Sean McNally, the left half forward. Tyrone, uh, two Tyrone men going for that one. They're crowding the middle and they're not letting Liam Austin uh, get a run to the long uh, high ball from Pat Donnan's uh, kicks out. So Tyrone, very impressive in these first eight minutes. But there was pushing there uh, by Eugene McKenna. It's a free out. The cabin referee, Michael Grennan, on the spot and very firm with his command there. In the ninth minute, Tyrone with three points on the board, down still to score. John Trainer playing out around the middle, and I'm not sure if that's working to, to good effect for Down, really, because uh, it only means that Tyrone can crowd the middle and uh, can block off the passage that Liam Austin might like to lead free. Two Tyrone men again, but Greg Blaney. A good chance for Greg Blaney. I don't think it's coming. Oh, it has! I wasn't quite sure that that one was coming in. It was Greg Blaney who kicked the point. 
But as that ball came in there, it was anxiety on the part of the Tyrone men. Two of them went for it. Greg Blaney's point then to settle Tyrone. We've not seen a lot of Liam Austin there, but uh, there's a hard challenge uh, on Liam Austin by Eugene McKenna. But Austin's a big man, six foot five. And here's Ambrose Rogers trying to pull Kieran McGarvey out of position. Looking for Greg Blaney. That was a good ball. Uh, There's Greg Blaney, his second point of the Ulster final. And there was Ambrose Rogers, who came way out from full forward. The space was there. Greg Blaney, obviously to uh, a plan, was there to pick it up and pick off the point. This is Joey Mallon, looking for Damien O'Hagan. Paddy Kennedy's clearance to Mickey Linden, who's had to come deep for it. He tried to find Brendan Mason. We've not seen Brendan Mason in the match at the first 11 minutes. But he's a very dangerous attacker in possession, a man who likes to walk through into goal-scoring positions. I don't think we'll see a lot of goals, really, because championship matches are very tough, but we've just seen a very good point from Brendan Mason. His first touch of the Ulster final, and he's got a point. Brendan Mason, would you believe it, out of a total of seven goals at 28 points in this Ulster championship for down, has got no fewer than three goals and 14 points up to today. Brent so while uh, very accurate, this wasn't the ideal position. He had to fight off a hard challenge, but he just looked up and he saw the chance and took the point. So while uh, Tyrone started the better and led by three points, well, in a twinkling, they're level. And uh, already we can see that the pace of the down forwards causing problems for the Tyrone backs. Ambrose Rogers in particular, coming out the field to very good effect. And he's looking once again for Greg Blaney. He's got... Uh, well, he had a man to give it to, Tony McCarroll. It just didn't quite work on that occasion. And plunked it down, he has had to go back and help. And he's overcarried. And he's very, very uh, unhappy about that decision, Plunkett Donaghy. But he did have a man free. He had John Lynch to give it to. He just couldn't find him. Three points apiece then, but a great chance here for uh, John Trainer. Well, you might have thought in this situation that Brendan Mason would be the man to take the free. But when there's a slight angle on them from the right, they're usually taken by John Trainer with his left. He's a very good free taker too. And he's got it nicely and down. Out there streaming with free taking talent because John Trainer can kick them from the right. Brendan Mason can kick them from the left. Aidan Skelton's kick out. A tremendous atmosphere here at this Ulster final. There always is for Ulster Championship. Uh, it's uh, a mini All-Ireland of its own. We've not, of course, seen uh, Ulster teams all that often in All-Ireland Finals in recent years. In fact, only twice since Down last uh, brought the Sam Maguire Cup North in 1968. We then had our man, 77. They just didn't... Uh... Here's a chance, a goal chance for Brendan Mason. He can't make really it over the bar. Oh, Brendan Mason, put through by Ambrose Rogers, the man who's doing all the damage. It surely was as easy to put it under the crossbar. Brendan Mason has to be content with the point, if content is the right word in the circumstances. Put through there by Ambrose Rogers, who had picked up a good position. He unselfishly gave it to Brendan Mason. Brendan Mason should certainly have put it under. In his anxiety, he put it over. Liam Austin there to help. Greg Blaney, now back to top form. He's had a catalogue of injuries, really, over the past couple of years. Here's John Lynch for Tyrone. To find... Uh, Sean McNally, they're so like each other actually. And here's a Plunkett Donaghy, the third blonde haired member of this Tyrone team. Sean McNally, he's fouled by Peter Walsh. It's a free in to Tyrone, a free in to Mickey Mallon. It's five points to three for Down. Here's Mickey Mallon to make it five points to four, and he does. If Tyrone have good, if Down have good free takers, then uh, Mickey Mallon is also doing the business and doing it well for Tyrone. Oh. Mickey Linton, he's shot very well blocked there. Down towards Brendan Mason, who's come right out the field. He's trying to run the legs off Sean Donnelly, uh, the man with the injury. Brendan Mason showing a lot of pace again. He can give it to Greg Blaney if he can find him. To Tony McCarroll, trying to work his way through into a goal. 
uh, position, but John Lynch did tremendous work there. That was great work by John Lynch to go back and cover. His clearance wasn't as good, however. Mickey Linden, if he turns right, he'd see Greg Blaney. Tony McCardle instead. A great drive by Tony McCardle. He's got the point, Tony McCardle. It was Brendan Mason who worked it through from the left. Tony McCardle kept it going. He was looking uh, for a moment for a goal. John Lynch went back to cover for Tyrone. But at the second attempt, Tony McCardle found a very good point for down. Noel McGinn finding Kevin McCabe, a man who likes to go forward. Kevin McCabe should give it to Eugene McKenna. He does. Eugene McKenna may try to find Damien O'Hagan here. There's a point, surely, for Eugene McKenna. Very well blocked down by Ross Carr. Good, vigilant defensive play by Carr. And suddenly, Tyrone are being pushed back. They're not really going anywhere. But here's Damien O'Hagan. Can he turn his man? There's a point there, surely. There is, and Damien O'Hagan has got it. Well, Tyrone would be very, very glad indeed of that point. But they had to work very, very hard for it. Austin and Donaghy. Austin knocks it down to Sean McNally, who's had a good game for Tyrone. Showing his paces into Mickey McClure. Another very fast forward, Mickey McClure. He's fouled. And this is the chance of the equaliser. With three minutes to half time, Tyrone changed their free takers. Mickey Mallon, who started so well and then seemed to lose his confidence and to lose his concentration as he was kicking. Well, he's given way to Mickey McClure. Six points to five. Mickey McClure to make it six points all. He's done it all right. He slipped as he kicked, but he had just got his uh, action right as he kicked, and he got the point. And just watch after he kicked. He fell back in following through, but nonetheless, he got the point. Kevin McCabe's kick towards Damien O'Hagan. Closely marked there by Paddy Kennedy. In towards Eugene McKenna, but Paddy O'Rourke there, and Kennedy and O'Rourke. There had been some criticism, really, of uh, the play of the middlemen in the down back line, but both of them are doing well so far. Plunkett Donaghy. Pat Donahue keeping his eye on this one, had it covered. He was confident. Tyrone for a second thought. He fell back. He did, actually. He fell back over the line. I can tell you that the green flag has gone up. Pat Donahue, well, I was wondering myself if he had fallen back. I knew that he was keeping his eye on it, but it was a dangerous ball. Pat Donahue, I said he was confident. Perhaps he was overconfident. But let's see what Michael Grennan decides here, because uh, the flag went up. He must speak to the umpires, but uh, you'd have to feel in this situation that the umpire was the best placed man to make a decision. And I'd be surprised, really, if the referee changes his mind about that one. Here it is, Plunkett Donaghy. Well, we may not be able to quite judge it from here, but we can see Pat Donnan's dilemma. He had to keep his eye on it. Did he fall back over? Yes, he did. He fell back over the line. The referee has agreed with the umpires. I can't really see that the referee could have uh, done anything else but agree, because that's what the umpires are there for. And there's a case, I think, of uh, umpires being very vigilant, doing their business, and in remarkable circumstances, really, Tyrone have got the goal. Full marks to Plunkett Donaghy for that fine effort, but full marks, too, I think, to the umpire, who had the courage to make that decision. Well, the glory of this game sometimes is its uncertainty and its unpredictability. We saw there, and here's Mickey McClure driving his way through and driving over the great point. And that's the confidence that a score can give you. But there's Mickey McClure. He's a man who's had a very good first half. He's made a big impact. We're just over the 35 minutes. Mickey McClure driving forward. He can kick left and right. He opted to use his left on that occasion, and he used it very effectively indeed. And uh, everything else, I think, in the first half that went before that goal will be uh, forgotten about, really. It's half-time, because everybody at Cronus, and I'm sure uh, all our viewers as well, will, will uh, try to analyse that goal and try to find out what was going on in the mind of Pat Donnan as that ball dropped. So, Michael Green has started up again, and I think what may be significant is that the wind is getting stronger. It wasn't all that much of an influence in the first half. It may well be in the second half. And Down will have the advantage of that win. But Tyrone with the first attack of the game. Damien O'Hagan trying to back his way through under a lot of pressure. He gets it back to Mickey McClure. But the referee has deemed that Damien O'Hagan held on to it too long and gives a free out. The big crowd there in the background uh, up on Convent Hill. 
I'm sure we're as aware as anybody, really, that Down were very hot favourites to win this Ulster title, even though Tyrone had also impressed people who had seen them. A good kick out by Aidan Skelton into the wind, but Liam Austin was first there for Down, and here's John Trainer. Mickey Linden was shouting for a pass to the left. Surely there's a point here. That's what Down needs. And John Trainer, at long last, has found the range. Eight minutes of play gone in the second half. Down had to wait those eight minutes. They missed four chances before John Trainer put it over. Well, as he cut in here, John Trainer, just for a second, he was looking for somebody to give it to. In the end, he did the sensible thing and put it over. Just a goal in it now. Eugene McKenna, a very good catch. The first time we've seen uh, Eugene work to a good effect. But he was pushed as he went forward. The Tyrone men are disappointed that the referee did not give an advantage there and let them continue the attack. They'll go back and Punkat Donahue will take the free. Noel McGinn wanted players to run to that one. Eugene McKenna, oh nicely uh, held by Eugene McKenna. He's fouled a great chance for Tyrone to make it four points again. A good catch by Eugene McKenna. A Tyrone forward had gone inside waiting for the pass, but he was fouled, but good work by the Tyrone captain. Just when Tyrone need a score. This free to be taken by Mickey uh, Mallon. A man who lost his confidence from freeze halfway through the first half, but he's regained at the half-time. Talk has obviously done the trick, and Mickey Mallon gets a very valuable point for Tyrone. Surprisingly, the big crowd at Clonus uh, strangely subdued. They've not really got behind their teams. I think they were disappointed with the play in the second quarter. Adrian McAuffield for down to Tony McCardle. We've not seen a lot of Tony McCardle. That's not a good ball. It puts Mickey Linder under a lot of pressure. And it puts Ambrose Rogers under pressure. And here's uh, Plunka Donaghy, who's doing great work uh, falling back to help his defence. Looking for Stephen Rice. Nice. Oh, it, it was nice to cut by Barry Breen, but then he let it fall. And Damien O'Hagan won himself a free. I thought... Bar uh, that one was covered by Barry Breen, but Tyrone were putting on pressure, and that all stemmed once again, as so many of their attacks have stemmed today, from the good work of Pl Plunkett Donaghy, back helping his own defence. And uh, if Tyrone were to lead by five points after 11 minutes of play of the second half, well, the Down's task would be obvious. They do lead by five points, and Down's task is obvious. And now the Tyrone flags up on Convent Hill are flying high. Plunker Donaghy knocking it down. He might have uh, caught that one, actually. He didn't realise that he was unchallenged. Brendan Mason, who got a lovely point early on and then uh, became anonymous, really, in this Ulster final. But he wins himself for free here. And Sean Donnelly is, uh, came into this game carrying an injury, and uh, he's still carrying that injury. And that's for certain. Sean Donnelly, well, that picture telling a story as he runs back there. You can see that he's playing uh, with an injury, and uh, Brendan Mason gets on with the business and lands that free. And uh, surprising, really, that Tyrone have not made a change and taken off Sean Donnelly because he simply wasn't fit to do himself justice. And with play resumed... Uh, John Lynch, I can tell you, off the ball is still receiving attention, but the, the referee had no option but to continue with the game. Down have brought on another substitute. Francis McKibben has come on for John Trainer, who's had a disappointing Ulster title. But here's one man who has to disappoint him. Kevin McCabe, he'd love to score a point there. And he has That's a wonderful point by Kevin McCabe. There's the mark of a very experienced player. Kevin McCabe with John Lynch way down on the other side of the field, going off, sadly, for Tyrone. Kevin McCabe with a magnificent point, driving forward. Here we see it again. The man who won an All-Star a few years ago, driving his way forward. The chance of the point was there, and Kevin McCabe had the confidence to go for it. He's got the point. A great score for Tyrone. So lots of changes in both teams. Let me remind you again that Francis McKibben has come in for John Trainer, that Stephen Conway has come in for John Lynch, Brendan Mason. If ever Down needed a point, they need one now. And they've got it from Brendan Mason. That's much more like it from the downmen, but they need more scores now. Well, Brendan Mason, uh, given the seriousness of the situation, was hardly going to miss that one. 
It's gone very, very ragged. It's got a little nasty, and you wonder with all those names going into Michael Greener's book, will one of them eventually be sent off? The cheer is for Tyrone, who win themselves a free in the middle of the field. Only 11 minutes of play left. Ambrose Rogers back helping his bats, but uh, Paddy uh, Kennedy will have to help too and get that one out. He does, and again they're pulling, and again they're dragging, and surely that's all so needless. And off the ball, one of the Tyrone men has been struck, and the linesman, I can tell you so. One of the Tyrone men uh, was struck there right in front of the uh, linesman who wasted absolutely no time in going in to tell Michael Greenan what happened and to give him the name of the culprit and this time I think we will see a man being sent off or will we? The uh, Tyrone substitute Stephen Conway is the man who was struck the man who went down the referee is taking names and he's sending the down man Peter Walsh off the field and I think he's also sending off the Tyrone man. I think he's also sending off the Tyrone man. Well obviously we don't know, we can't know what the linesman said but I can tell you with some degree of certainty that the linesman did see what happened. Mickey Lendon was calling for a pass. Greg Blaney to make a run. It's just not quite going right for Greg Blaney. He was robbed there brilliantly by Kevin McCabe. I must give that man credit for that piece of robbery. As the ball is pumped forward towards Damien O'Hagan. The fullback, I think, has it in control. Oh, no, he hasn't. Damien O'Hagan, that's a great ball for Damien O'Hagan. Well, credit where credit is due. That ball was in Greg Blaney's grasp. Kevin McCabe robbed him. He set up the chance. He sent it forward, drove it forward towards Damien O'Hagan. He had to work hard to rob Paddy Kennedy, who seemed to have it at the first attempt. But Damien O'Hagan stuck grimly to his task. Even when he got it, the point wasn't certain. But he had the confidence and the ability to snatch the chance. It's gone wide and the crowd waiting for the full-time whistle. We're over two minutes into injury, injury time. Two minutes, 20 seconds, actually, as Michael Greenan waits to blow the full-time whistle. The ball has got to be thrown back for the kick-out. And Tyrone heading to Croke Park to meet Galway. Next month in the All-Ireland semi-final. It's all over. Here it is. Tyrone have done it. 111 to 10 points. They won the Ulster Championship in 1984, or if memory serves us right, we all said then that Frank McGuigan won the Ulster Championship. Tyrone had no Frank McGuigan today, but it is a tribute to their character, to their spirit, and to their great backing hearts that they fought back after the loss, first of Frank McGuigan, and then of Patsy Curlin, who broke a leg and had to retire. But they came here today without those two great stars, and Eugene McKenna, the captain, was able to take his place and was able to lead his team out of Ulster, up to Croke Park with the Ulster title.